What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to DTP Sports and very, very interesting things that have happened today in the city of Philadelphia. Very, very interesting. Oh boy. So the, uh, let's start with the breaking news. Basically, that was I was I would say announced like what two and a half, three hours ago, letting the time settle and also to get into Jeffrey Lurie's press conference. That was I'll get into that in a little bit because uh, I have a lot to say about that. But you know. The breaking news is, Doug Peterson is no longer the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. He has been canned, he is fired, he is gone, goodbye. So, initial reaction and thoughts about that, I'm still, I don't think I have a full opinion on it. It's just right now, I'm, like, I'm stuck in the middle. I can understand both sides of the argument. I can understand why people think Doug should be fired just because of the terrible season and also the past few years combined as well. Having the team just ever since the Super Bowl, you get off the slow starts and you got to crawl your way back into the division race. You eventually win it, get into the playoffs, but you lose a couple of games in. You lose against the Saints in the divisional game. You lose against the Seahawks in the wild card game. So basically, two seasons in a row, you get a slow start and then you got to find a way to climb your back in, climb your way back into the playoffs, basically. And then you have this season. Where literally everything you could have possibly thought would have, would have gone wrong ha went wrong for the Eagles this season. Just terrible quarterback play, injuries, just everything under the sun. Just no players playing to their capabilities, i.e. Carson Wentz. And just the season overall just being a complete trash shoot. Just a complete trash shoot. And Doug Peterson not giving himself any help either because a lot of coaching decisions... Just were like saying, Doug, what the hell are you doing right there? So I can understand that argument. And also, especially that final game of the season against the Washington football team where you bench Jalen Hurts and you put Nate Sudfield in. Basically describes that you are tanking the game and just trying to purposely lose to get the better draft pick. So I can understand that side. I can also understand the other side basically saying, okay, Doug Peterson is a Super Bowl winning head coach. We can believe that maybe he needs another year and he could find his way to build this team back up. Find his way to rebound from the terrible season that was this past season for the Eagles. So I can understand that side too. That's where I'm so stuck in the middle because I can see both sides. I can definitely see it. And just overall, it, it's still it's just really confusing right now with this situation with the team. Because you get so many weeks, or like so many, like in the past like week and a half or so, you get a bunch of these leaks spreading out, rumors spreading out that Doug Peterson is most likely going to get fired, that he's most likely going to get canned, and just like there's so much separation between Doug Peterson and the front office that most likely his job is going to come to an end in this city. So it's just like, it is the weird time right now. It's definitely a weird time. I still need to find a way to get my full opinion on this. Maybe I'll get it in the next few days or so. Who knows? Maybe it'll take the entire offseason or whoever when they find their next head coach. Because right now where it stands, you don't have Doug Peterson. There is so much work to be done with this team besides now finding, well, finding a new head coach. And then now you still have Howie Roseman running the ship. And that's where I want to get into right now. So, Jeffrey Lurie's press conference, <laughs> oh boy, that was terrible. That press conference, that entire situation, that, that entire waste of everyone's time was a complete joke. It sounded like he was just making excuses, and then all of the baloney about believing in Howie Roseman. Like, that's my entire problem right there, and that's the entire fact that Jeffrey Lurie is never going to fire Howie Roseman. That is reality. That is a fact. And he basically just summarized it in the press conference. It, even before the press conference, you probably should know that Howie Roseman is not going to get fired. These Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman, they're interconnected. They're buddy-buddy. He's never going to fire him. Jeffrey Lurie, Howie Roseman was his hire. It's never going to change. And that's the problem that the Eagles are in right now. And it's just, this in, that press conference, like, <clears throat> it just leaves a terrible taste in everyone's mouth, especially my mouth. It's, it's just bad. It was so bad. It was a joke. Everyone was laughing. People turned off the press conference because of how embarrassing it was. It was just, 
it felt like he w- it, it sounded like a Phillies press conference for crying out loud when John Middleton was the guy putting all the pressure out there and just saying a bunch of garbage comments. That's what it felt like entirely. And just him going to Howie Roseman saying that, like, he, he admits that Howie Roseman has made mistakes, but he's putting faith in Howie Roseman to fix the mistakes. And also, the reporters were going after Jeffrey Lurie. They were asking him all of these questions about the failed draft picks, about the situation with Doug Peterson, Carson Wentz. They were they were eating him up, and, and Jeffrey Lurie should have known these questions were coming. He definitely should have known. I'm sure he did, but it didn't sound like he was prepared for him, and he was trying to work his way around the questions not giving you an exact answer because he's never going to give you an exact answer because that's what people that's what people in the business do they're never going to give you an exact answer and just the entire situation with howie roseman i can definitely find it right here thank yeah he's i get this from jeff mosher thank god he basically put the entire (laughs) press conference on twitter right there so so he's basically vouching for howie roseman because The moves that he's made over the past few seasons, yes, they led to a Super Bowl in 2017. They did. But now, Howie Roseman has put you in a terrible situation cap-wise, and also the Carson Wentz contract, too. You're, you cannot get your, (laughs) because anything you do with that contract, whether it's trading him, whether it's cutting him, which you're not going to do, because that's (laughs) idiotic at that point. You're going to be dealing with a cap penalty regardless of what you do with Carson Wentz. If you keep him, you trade him, you waive him, you're stuck with Carson Wentz at this point. Even though I do expect him to request a trade, maybe that won't happen, maybe it will. But that's just my feeling right there. It's just that when the reporters are just going after Howie Roseman and talking about the failed drafts, the missed picks, the missed opportunities... If every time someone asked that question, Jeffrey Lurie was basically like, oh, but you got to look at the entire observation on just not by a one year standpoint, by you got to look at the entire picture, the bigger picture around in these drafts. And basically also talking about the people that Howie Roseman surrounds himself with, that there's GM type potential with the people that Howie Roseman surrounds himself with. Oh, okay, Doug. So, no, not Doug. Doug Peterson is gone. Okay, Jeffrey. So, with all of these, since you vouch for all of these people that Howie Roseman surrounds himself with, why do the Eagles suck at drafting? Why can't the Eagles pick someone actually good in the draft? Why are you drafting Jalen Hurts? Why can you draft a quality wide receiver? Why can you draft anyone in the secondary? Why can you draft anyone at all? Anyone. And you're saying these guys that Howie Roseman surrounds himself with are potential GMs in this league, or could be potential GMs in this league. How are you that bad at drafting, then? How are you that bad? And he continues to go with the story that, oh, you gotta look at the bigger picture. You gotta look at everything else surrounding the situation. It's just like, garbage absolute garbage it's ridiculous and that basically summarized howie roseman is never going to go anywhere he is never going to fire howie roseman he's like yeah howie has made mistakes but i have the fullest faith in him to make up for those mistakes garbage absolute garbage and there were so many other conversations it even brought up the situation with nate sudfeld which made me laugh which made me die because he was talking about Saint Nate Sudfeld on how he has the best long throw on any quarterback on the team. I'm like, what does that have anything to do with it? And then he was also talking about how Nate Sudfeld deserved to be the backup during the Super Bowl. It's just like, what? What are you talking about? Nate Sudfeld was the backup during the Super Bowl because Carson Wentz tore his ACL. <laughs> he was the only <laughs> was the only reason why he was the backup. <laughs> Carson Wentz was not going to be the backup on a torn ACL. That's just not possible. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I oh my god, it's it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And he was also talking about the situation revolving around Carson Wentz, and he's and he expressed that oh, an owner shouldn't have to make these decisions. He does believe that, like he never really stated that he wants Carson Wentz back next Carson Wentz back next year. Nor does he want to get rid of Carson Wentz. 
So basically, like like I said, working around the question, saying like, oh, maybe if we bring in a few head coaches next year, maybe that can help revitalize Carson's career. Carson has a ton of potential, yada, 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 yada. It's just a bunch of stuff where he's working around the question, not going to give you an exact answer. But I guess maybe, like, since he didn't give you that, but it's also, it's like, like, worrisome and also maybe beneficial that he also didn't give you the full answer for Carson Wentz. I can't fully process that right now. It's because it's just like the entire press conference is just like, what the hell is this guy talking about? It feels like he does, has no idea what he's talking about. And the reason that he said that Doug Peterson did not deserve to be fired. He basically, the main reason why he was fired is that because they didn't see eye to eye. They didn't see, they saw differently on where this team was right now. So was it Doug Peterson thought the team was still capable of winning right now? Did you guys think that this team needed to be retooled a little bit right now? Or did Doug think that the team needed to be retooled a little bit? Or, and you thought that the team could still win right now? It, it's an absolute joke right now. So basically, he also went on this whole spiel about this is a real tooling process and all this yada yada malarkey. And basically, it summarizes right there that the Eagle, it sounds, the Eagles are going to be rebuilding at this point. That's what it sounds like entirely. It definitely does. And also, this, the, some of the things that also were very prophetic was about the, uh, the Super Bowl and the events after the Super Bowl. It's just like in 2018. Oh, the Eagles, if, if Alshon Jeffrey didn't drop that pass against the Saints, we probably would have went to the Super Bowl that year. What? That was two years ago. Well, honestly, three years ago at this point, Jeffrey. What are you talking about? What are you talking about right there? It's like I'm trying, I'm, I'm going through Jeff Mosher right now, just looking for any other things that stand out right here. It's just like like basically what I said with how he surrounds himself with the people that he does surround himself. Uh, it's and here's one thing that's also interesting right now. And uh, man, I'm just I'm looking at this right now and I'm just like mind boggled, mind boggled. And he also said week 17 had nothing to do with the decision to fire. Doug Peterson, I feel like maybe that was a part of the process. It definitely wasn't the full reason, but it could have been part of the reason why. It, and Jeffrey Lurie didn't want to go into the specifics on the differences between Doug Peterson and himself. So basically, and he keeps emphasizing the long-term view. The long-term view. So th th that also describes to me that he wants to rebuild. I feel like, even though he said retool, Rebuild. It's basically rebuild at this point. Because right now, this team is so cap-strung right now. I don't think there's anything to really retool. You have to rebuild right now. And it's just... And he also pointed out that when they find another head coach candidate, that he must be a leader of the coaches. So is Doug Peterson not a leader of the coaches? Or did you guys not give him an opportunity to be the leader of the coaches? Hence why Doug Peterson, in those rumors, after he got fired, said that he didn't want people to tell him what to do. So was Doug Peterson not able to get any say whatso in anything? Was he not able to make any kind of decisions for himself for the team? That's what's confusing right now. And I'm, I'm just looking at the rest of it right now. It's just that... And there's not going to be a rush to find the next head coach. And he says, all the people that we have in the building who evaluate talent are very capable people. And he's pleased to have them in their operation, in their operations. Question was if he would consider having John Dorsey or someone else take control of the draft. So hmm. it's tough. It, this It's just like going through this entire press conference. It was just like, what is this man talking about? does he know what he's talking about? And it sounded like he was working around every single question. And the one thing that still bothers me, even going back to the discussions about the draft and a lot of the missed picks where he's basically saying, oh, you got to look at the bigger picture, what goes into drafting, yada, yada, yada. Just admit that you fucked up during the drafts, okay? Admit that you fucked up. Admit that you screwed up with D not drafting DK Metcalf. Admit that. Just admit that you missed a lot of opportunities to have some game-changing talent in his roster, and Howie Roseman did not draft him. 
because he went in a different direction, and he get, drafted a guy like Jalen Hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I Like, I don't want to blame Jalen. Like, Jalen Hurts is like, because you don't draft a quarterback in round two when you have a quarterback in Carson Wentz. You just don't do that. You don't do that whatsoever. It's just so mind-boggling. It really is. This press conference was an absolute joke. It was. And this is going to be a very long offseason. Because with these two stooges at the helm, Larry and Roseman, I don't have any faith in this team. I don't have any faith in them making the decisions. And Jeffrey Lurie trusts the people that Howie surrounds himself with. That, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. Because if these people were capable of being GMs, or so you say they are, I don't think the Eagles would have been in a situation to begin with. Because how is this team still bad at drafting? How is this team not able to put a complete roster together that can actually, actually compete? And you trust the people that Howie surrounds himself with? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Ugh. I'm speechless. I'm basically speechless at this point. <laughs> Why? Well, it's going to be a very long offseason. I think to summarize this entire press conference, it's going to be a long offseason. A very long offseason. Figuring out what to do with the roster, next head coach, what the hell the draft is going to look like. It's going to be so long and so tedious and very annoying. Very, very annoying. And hey, us as Eagles fans, we're going to be here for every second of it. We definitely are going to be. So, it's going to wrap it up for this video. I want to hear your thoughts on the Doug Peterson firing. Your thoughts on Jeffrey Lurie's press conference. <laughs> you think it was a joke? And basically, did you think it was a joke? So, I want to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to leave those in the comment section below. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the Painted Lines, which I am a part of. Their links will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out the Florida Podcast merchandise website. That link will also be in the description below. Thank you for watching this video, and I pray for your health and safety because of this entire Eagles situation. So, thank you for that. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time.